Okay, so we're taking the uh, floor out of this grain bin for some sump service. We've seen a couple mice here and there. And now that we're in the last couple of slats, the back 40, look at what's going on in there. There's rats. And they are not happy. They're trying to get out. Man. get out through that fan the grid is too closely spaced hear them and you can see them green mesh over that fan. Must be away though. Alright, this might be a stupid thing to do. Because I know there are rats in there. Oh yeah. They're not very happy either. They can't get out of there. Turn that fan on right about now, they have a rat slicer and dicer, a rat shooter. Be like a salad shooter, but different. <laughs> I suppose the little ones can get in and out of there. But until we bothered them by taking the floor out of this bin, which in case you're wondering is done because we have a rotten, faulty sump, they were probably perfectly content to live their life in there. It took us about eight hours to do this. Initially it was just my dad and myself and then later the key keeper joined us. So that's why we're doing it. Save us save ourselves a lot of money versus paying somebody to do it. But the way some of these things are, I'm not really sure if we're going to be able to reuse this floor or if we'll have to put a new one in. Because some of these panels are pretty badly degraded. And I suppose that if they still make this style, you could probably just get replacements for the ones that are bad. Put the rest of them in. But some of them got pretty bent up. It is true what we read about doing this, though. The further back you go, the easier it gets, because the more advantage you have over them, the more you can kick them around and get them out of there. They basically just latch together. They've got kind of a tongue and groove means of fastening to one another. And then as far as the elevated floor is concerned, again, this isn't a how-to guide, but they are actually held up by a multitude of these things, spaced around every so often. But you can see how there's been a lot of garbage 
that's come through this floor. I'm surprised by the amount of kernels of grain that have gotten through there because most of the openings and certainly when they were new weren't big enough for that. Other surprises that we found, again we have no idea how these got through there because as far as we know the bins, the floor in this bin's never been replaced. This, this is the remnants of a capacitor off of a motor and this is the cover that would go with it I guess. And they were both beneath that floor. I don't know what the story is with that. And you can hear those rats pawing around in there. They're really not very happy. We shook them up pretty good. But I guess that the fan, since the fan pulls in air at the bottom and blows it out the top in this particular kind of bin, I guess that the fan is what's been responsible for blowing all this trash across the floor. Yeah, it was a very interesting thing to do to take the floor out of the bin, but I'll be happy if I never have to do it again. For those of you without an agrarian background or those of you who are simply curious and maybe never used one of these because maybe you're more into livestock or something like that, the uh, auger that you see laying in here is actually a sweep auger. You lock that into a thing that's sitting over there and it spins around and around to help you more completely clean out your bin before you have to get in here and shovel it. But the one thing I'd be curious about, the one thing I don't know how they dealt with, that thing's got a regular 15 amp plug on it, maybe a 20 amp plug, I'm not sure. Maybe something bigger than that even because that is a pretty good sized motor on that thing. And it would spin around and around. Do they have an extension cord with a swivel? I don't know. I've never seen that thing in action. But I just thought I'd get some video of rats running around in a grain bin. My apologies if that upsets some of you with more sensitive stomachs. But it was kind of interesting to watch the key keeper and our father running around in here dispersing the rats with alacrity. <laughs> so thank you for watching if I do indeed decide to upload this and feel free to leave a comment if you happen to have one. I must admit I'm pretty uh, impressed with the low light sensitivity of this camcorder. Although by the time YouTube compression has gotten done with it and the video editor's compression too, it's not going to look like much or as good as it did when the camcorder shot it. A little bit of an addendum to this video, although again, I reiterate, this is not by any stretch of the imagination a how-to video. If you have a grain bin that has a floor like this and you're wanting to take it out, well, the first thing you've got to do to get started, we had this skirting in there. In case you're wondering if this floor was completely intact, which it is not, this would actually isolate the rats and the mice and other animals from getting at the grain that was stored in this bin. They can't just have a hidey ho time wandering around in there and getting up in the grain and really getting at the good stuff. At least in theory they can't. More likely in reality too if the uh, floor in this thing didn't have any holes in it along the way. But this stuff would serve to keep them at bay. This is the first thing that's got to come out. And at first it seems that when you're starting to take this floor up the only answer appears to be that of violence. That is to say you basically get in there with a hammer, you start at the door, you work your way back. We noticed that um, when we got about halfway in, these pieces wanted to come out to the left. And then once we got past the pit and where the auger picks up the grain and all that stuff, the sump, then we noticed they were wanting to come out to the right. So maybe that's, maybe that's indicative of how they were originally installed or maybe that's just how it worked out for us. Again, maybe there is a better way of doing this, but if you're looking at this, I know we researched it some by way of the internet, by way of YouTube. We didn't really find a whole lot other than some people who said, yeah, it gets easier the further you go into the bin and the more of the floor you take up. And I would definitely agree with them along the way. But you start by taking out this skirting. We numbered all of these as we took them out because they've got to go back in the way they came. There might be some of them that are more or less the same length at the center of the bin, but why tempt fate? We are not going to be the ones putting these back in, at least in all likelihood. The people who are going to bring the new sump, maybe a new auger tube as well. Because it's kind of like your wisdom teeth. If you're in there for a penny, you're in there for a pound, you might as well get anything. They're probably going to put the floor back in. Maybe we'll have to put a new floor in the bin. I really don't know for sure. But what I do know is that if you're wondering how to get started with this, yeah, the answer is basically violence. You unscrew the bolts holding these in. Then when you get to the planks in the floor, you just start knocking them with a hammer until they come apart. And you just keep going straight back. 
and eventually you get to the point where you can put the hammer aside for the most part. You can just give these things a good downward shot with a boot on the end of your hoof and they'll bend over and they'll come out and it'll just be as easy as falling off of a log, although considerably messier. I strongly suggest that you opt to take care of your respiratory system whenever any of us were in there except maybe this most recent round with the key keeper. I don't know if he was doing, he was wearing a mask or not, but whenever I was in there, whenever my dad was in there, we definitely were, so, because there's, there's nasty stuff in there. You know, rat poop is nasty, rats are nasty. I know some people keep them as pets, but then you at least clean up after them, and here, nobody's doing that. It's just left to Mother Nature's own devices, and she doesn't care too much about what goes on inside a grain bin. I will say I was enormously tempted to go and throw the circuit breaker for the fan, but I didn't. <laughs> At least I haven't yet, because the key keeper, he's a killjoy. He's like, what? Well, that'll get to stinking real bad. And No, I don't think it would. It's a fan. It circulates air. <laughs> but I digress. Thank you again for watching. Just wanted to throw in this quick addendum, because I'm sure someone out there is going to cane me for not making this into a how-to video. I did have some thought of it. But it didn't play out that way. So thank you for watching. And once again, by all means, do feel free. Leave a comment if you happen to have one. Here's something of a postscript, a follow-up to this video, which um, was never really shot with the intention of actually uploading it. Never mind, that's just a minor detail. You can see that the rack wagon is once again empty here. That's right, the floor has gone back into the bin after the repairs were made. And this was, as might have been previously mentioned, what was repaired. The sump for the auger at the bottom of the bin was in pretty bad shape. You see how rusted out it is. I'm amazed that the manufacturer's name is even still slightly readable after the action of the grain running against that, especially the cornstarch. Well, that might make it less severe, actually, because the cornstarch is going to act as a lubricating agent. The people who actually did the repair work, which was not us, they put the floor back in the bin. And I just thought I'd get some quick footage of what this looked like before the bin was all filled up again. They seemingly killed 12 rats while they were working in here. There's the new sump looking all nice and shiny. I also put something in here to facilitate easier cleanup with a shovel. We get the last of the grain out of here. Now it's really weird to look in here and see all those numbers on the floor. And even as bent up as some of this material got, they were able to reuse all but I think four pieces of the original flooring. And you can tell which ones they changed because they don't have any numbers printed on them. So go ahead and close this up again. Assuming I can do so without any unnatural gymnastics here on camera. It was certainly easier than I expected it to be. And with all of that said, I thank you for watching. And if you'll excuse me, <laughs> I want to get back into my air-conditioned truck. Because in addition to being in the upper 80s, which wouldn't be so bad, it's also extraordinarily humid out here.